Many happy people are here. Hallelujah. Our Lord is in our midst. That makes us happy and joyful. Hallelujah. As uh, Hallelujah Sodram, I just wanted to uh, read one scripture and I wanted to take a couple of minutes. Then Dennis is going to share from the word of God. For that I need a, uh, Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. The la last verse of Hebrews chapter 4. I just want to read. Hallelujah. And I want to talk to two, three, two, three minutes, maybe five minutes from there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There it, we read this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, in time of need. My God is there for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My in time of God, need, my God is there. Yesterday I was listening a testimony of a Hindu man. He was so pious. He was so dedicated to all their deities. He was wholeheartedly serving their God. Some miserable things happened in his family. Hallelujah. One person died. Second person died. Hallelujah. There was four deaths take place in his family within one month. Hallelujah. It was so heartbreaking. Very severe condition he was going through. Hallelujah. That time, hallelujah, he... He wanted to know what is the reason why I am going through all these troubles. So he wanted to go and ask to their gods who can tell them why, why all these sufferings and miseries are happening to me. Hallelujah. So when he approached somebody, some religious priest of that system in which he was, the priest told him, we cannot tell you, I may, our gods may be able to tell you these things uh, when we ask him, but it is not the right time for it because something happened, somebody died in your family, you have to wait for 16 days because now somebody died in your family, you are unholy, you have no right to come and ask to God. When the 16 days pass, we make some special sacrifices to our God and our God may tell you what is the reason why all these sufferings happen. Hallelujah. So what I mean to say is that there are peoples who are black, blackmailed by the devil, who are living in total ignorance of the true living God. They do not know who is God. But our God says, anytime, whenever you have a need, you come to the throne of grace so that I will give you mercy. I will be merciful to you. I will give you my grace. My grace is sufficient for you. Whatever situation you are going through, I will put you out of that situation. I will bring relief. I bring freedom. I will, I will set your captivities away. And I will declare that you are free. And I will make you enjoy all my blessings anytime. Irrespective of time, irrespective of any limitations, our God is willing to help us 24 hours a day, 300 and hallelujah, 26 days in a year, hallelujah, every second, every moment, every minute, our God is available for us. How many of you are happy because our God is available for us? Hallelujah, tell to the next, next person, my God is available for me. My God is available for me. My God is available for me. That is the great privilege of our great Christian hope which he have given us, which has been given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege. Because our God's name is what? My God's name is I am. I am what I am. That's his name. What is I am means? I am means I am a God of now. Whenever you have a problem, I am a God of now. What is your problem? I am a God of now. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. I can set you free. I can bring relief to you. I can take away, take away your captivity. Whatever problems you are going through, I am a God of now. Because the word of God tells us through Jesus Christ, we have been given great mercy. That mercy is saying, any time, in the time of need, irrespective of night or day, or winter or summer or midnight or whatever time you have a problem you come to me I will solve your problem in material of the time and the other things I am willing to help you what a great privilege we have given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ I thank you Lord for listening to me I thank God for listening to me hallelujah so the rest of the time brother Dennis is going to come and share from the word of God let us all hallelujah humbly uh, humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and let us prayerfully be in the presence of God so that the word of God come and deliver us and the, the, the now word for God always speaks for the word for now let the now word for right now be released through the child of God through the man of God may God get all the glory out of it I thank you hallelujah in the name of Jesus hallelujah Sodram. let us be in an attitude of prayer come thank you Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.
I want you all, uh, you know, I, I just uh, remembered something that a man of God once testified a long time ago. I heard it through YouTube, okay? It was uh, your, uh, David Yonkicho or Paul Yonkicho. One of the two. <laughs> all right, he once testified like this. He's always thankful. And once uh, there was nobody in the service, right? <laughs> and uh, he had a... I think at that time it was a really small church. It, it, maybe it was like 10 or 25 or 50 people in his church. So one Sunday, everybody, every day he used to have this attitude. Whatever the situation is, he always used to thank God. So he had this uh, neighbor, you know, neighbor pastor who used to come secretly to his service to see what he's doing. And, you know, he used to say every, every week this guy has the same thing to do. Whatever happens, he's always saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, for this thing. I want to know what happens this week. There's nobody in the church. You know, and uh, <laughs> I'm not saying because there's nobody in the church, but I just remembered it. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, he's sitting in the back bench and waiting to see what happens. And the man of God goes to the the podium and he says, I thank God that every day is not like this. Right? So he found a reason when there was no reason to be thankful. I, I think years ago, we used to have this complaint in our church, right? I don't know if you remember, but I remember. At one time, it used to be all boys in the worship team with guitars. And we used to say, God, why are there no girls? Now there are all <laughs> girls. <laughs> all girls and no boys. So be careful what you say to God. Amen? I don't know if you understood it, but there is always a reason, you know? God is like, it's always interesting how God acts. So be thankful for whatever you have. Amen? Don't say, I don't have this, wish I had this, or wish I didn't have that. Be thankful for what you have, because God has a reason behind everything that he does. Amen? Amen? It's for us to see. So let's be thankful. Let's take a moment and be thankful. Thank you, God, for everything that I have. Maybe in your personal life also, there might be areas where you're thinking, God, if only I had this, I would be better off. And you will never have a situation where you will be happy with everything that you have. But be thankful for what you have right now. The Bible says like this, you know, uh, Moses, after he left, uh, left Egypt, he was the prince of Egypt, but he ran away because he killed a person and he was, uh, he was in some faraway country and taking care of his father-in-law's flock. And the Bible says like this, that Moses was content in that. And I was like, how, how could Moses be content in that? If you remember what height he fell from, right? It's not like we cannot have that position in our life. We were never princes of Egypt or we didn't have that political pos position in our lives. But Mo the Bible says like this, Moses was content in that position. And then God called him out of that position. Amen? Be satisfied where you are, then God will call you out of it. Amen? I don't know if it's a, if it's a hard truth, but it's a truth. You know? The moment you give up in your, circum in your circumstances, there God will take over your circumstances. Amen? Uh, that's not my message, but... And we have a lot of time. So if, you, if anybody of you feel like you have something in your heart that God put in your heart, feel free to tell me also, right? All right? All right, let's all just close our eyes for one moment and ask God what he wants to share. Father, we just come before your presence, Lord. Uh, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, thank you. Help us to be always thankful of everything that you have given to us, Father. Father, we surrender everything into your hands, Lord. We... We bring all the areas where we have been thankless towards you, complaining towards you. And we ask forgiveness for those areas, Lord. Help us to be content in our present because we know that our present is not our eternity. It is just a moment, Father. We thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that you would speak to us whatever it is that you want to speak to us, Lord. We are your people. We want to hear your voice, Father. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, yeah, I'm really lost. I don't know what to say to everybody. But we'll go as the Holy Spirit wants us to do. I think God wants us to spend a little bit more time in worship. Amen. Amen. I know most of us have heard 
so many things from the Bible, so many things from the Word of God, right? I'm sure we're all happy and we're all full. Amen. But for some few moments in our lives, you know, let's just uh, ask God, God, tell me those hidden things that only I can hear from you. Amen? Amen. Uh, I will tell you this. All the messages that are given out from the church, whether it is from anybody, they might not necessarily change your life. Amen? I, I don't know. Nobody is shocked. But you should be shocked. Right? The messages, you know, I don't know. I can prepare for 10 years and give you an amazing message. But that is not going to make anything out of your life. Amen. That might encourage you. You know, every time I go to a man of God's message or even sometimes when I even speak my, uh, the messages which God is giving through me, I'm also surprised and I'm also encouraged. But I have never noticed any of them changing my life. Right? You know, we're just speaking what God has given to us. The message that I preach or somebody preaches is the message which God is preaching to them. Amen. It's not necessary and they are giving it to you. Amen. So there is like a, it's like a, it's a food that is served twice. Do you understand the difference? It's not the first serve. It's not specifically tailored for you. It's tailored for me and whatever, you know, I feel I'm satisfied. The leftovers, I'm giving it to you. Amen? Do you understand it? It's like the, when Jesus fed that 5,000 people, right? The disciples took home. All the people in the home, what did they get? They got the leftovers. Who got the first-hand food? who were there at the feet of Jesus. Amen. So listen, every message, you know, God wants to give you something. It might just be, uh, I don't know who said it the other day, that when guest speakers come, they give you candy, right? I don't know who said that. Uh, somebody, a man of God said that recently. When guest pastors come, they give you, when the pastor is here, they give you, what do they give you? They give you some other form of candy, right? But if you want the true food, you have to go to Jesus. Amen. You know, we always saw. Uh, I know all of us read our Bible. I'm not going to ask who reads and who doesn't. But sometimes if you want your life to be changed, you have to let those words become alive in your life. Amen. I'm going to say a testimony again. I don't know why I'm saying about a testimonies by Yonggi Cho. But once, you know, a few members in his church decided... It's written in the Bible that Peter walked on water, right? So a few members in this church decided we're also going to walk on water. Uh, don't try, please. So they were uh, believers in a good church, right? So they said, uh, yeah, we will also go walk on water. So they said, uh, they gathered together and few of them found a good river and they said, this is the river. We're going to walk on this river because Peter did it, why can't I, right? That is our attitude also as Christians. Uh, he did it, why can't I do it, right? So he said, I will, uh, uh, Peter walked on water, I also want to walk on water, right? So they gathered together and they decided to walk. And I think all three, all of them passed away. Amen? I don't know how we would react. And people began to ask questions to the pastor of the church. You know, that's the first person they're going to ask. Members from your church decided to do this. And maybe you preached the previous day about how Peter walked on water. But why? Why did this happen to them? Amen. And the man of God had a reply. He said, you know, they all heard the word of God. It was like rice, right? You know, this hard rice, uncooked rice. That's how the written word of God is. But when the Holy Spirit works on it, it becomes cooked rice, right? You don't eat uncooked rice. You eat cooked rice, right? So if you want the words to actually become alive in your life, you have to let the Holy Spirit cook some things in your life. Amen? Cook some seeds that God has put in your life. You know, don't think that God has a... It's just given you use whatever you want. There is specific things that are given to you that God wants to use in your life. Man, specific seeds that God wants to use in your life. I don't know if you know, if you have had a personal experience with God, if you have received personal words from God. So, you know, build your life on the things that you receive personally from God, not through somebody else. Amen? If you build your life, you would be like all those who followed Moses in the wilderness. You would have nothing else to do but murmur against the plan of God. Amen? But if you want to actually build your life 
in a way that it's useful for other people, then be like Moses and listen directly from God. Amen. God wants to give you something. I don't know what it is that God wants to give you or God wants to do in your life. Amen. But you have to understand that God wants to do something in your life. Amen. And the Bible says like this, you know, he is the one who gives gifts without any shadow of turning in him. Amen. Without any partiality. If anybody wants wisdom, let him go and ask God who gives it generously. Amen. So if you want something in your life, ask God so that he can give it to you generously. Amen. So And let, let those things which God directly plants in your life, let it become fruits in your life. Amen? And that parable of the sower, which Jesus said, you know, if you look at that parable, it's not about the, the seed. The seed is always good. It's about the soil. Amen? Not every soil can take every kind of seed. So you have to understand your soil so that God can do something in that soil for you. Amen. So, for the next few moments, as I said earlier, like God wants us to do something in worship this morning. Amen. It's not about the message because I'm sure we have heard enough messages. God wants to do something in our hearts. Something different. Amen. Something that God, something unique. The plants which God has for you, it's always unique. It's not a, a second-hand copy of somebody else's plan. It is unique towards you. And you have to stand trusting in the promise of God. Trusting that God will do it for you. So are you willing to surrender that area into, into God's hand? And are you willing to say, God, I want you to build something in my life. Can we ask together, as a church, Lord, build something different in my life. I don't want the same things that somebody else has. I don't want to build on somebody else's vision. Give me my own vision. Give me my own vision. God wants to give some of you your own visions. Plans for his kingdom, but he wants to give it to you. Something which he has not given somebody else. But you have to receive it. And you have to build your life according to those visions. And God is not a God who's going to let the words which he has spoken towards you fail. Amen. The Bible says like this, he is faithful. The, the one who called you, he is faithful. Amen. And this morning, I think God is confirming some of the words towards you. God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. Even if you fail, God is still faithful. I don't know why this story is coming. You know, when Moses failed, God took him to a high mountain and told him, Look, Moses, that is the promised land. You won't enter that promised land. But years later, in the time of Christ, he came in the middle of that promised land itself. God is faithful concerning his promises. Can I get the worship team up? <laughs> and let's all just rise to our feet.
some of you need to call God in certain areas of your life. It's your personal life. Nobody else knows about those areas. But the Bible says like this, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. I don't know how much more easier than that it will get. But if you just call out the name Jesus, standing in some areas in your life, today you will be, you will have a breakthrough in those areas. You know, those areas which you cannot go forward, today stand in those areas and call on the name of Jesus. God will break you through out of those areas. Can we sing that song once again? I give myself away so you can use me. some areas that we can't give up.
give myself away so you can use me I give myself away no one else but you I give myself away so you ideas of how things are going to happen. Things in part, Lord. Only you know the whole picture, Father. Father, so this morning we just come to you, Lord, with our areas, Lord, that we're not able to give to you. And we give those areas into your hands. Father, from the, the impossibilities that we face, Father, we stand and we call out your name. Because as your word says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, we thank you for that great privilege that through Jesus Christ, we can bypass all the requirements that are written against us. And by that name itself, Lord, we can reach you in the time of our greatest need, Father. Father, we call on that name this morning. And we ask, Lord, for some areas in our lives to be broken through, Lord. Father, we ask for breakthrough and some promises in our lives, Lord. Is there anybody here who has incurred a loss again and again in their life? I'm talking financially. I don't know why it's coming to me. Again and again, financially... You're not able to go where God wants you to go. There might be many reasons behind it, but I, we're not, we don't have to get into the reasons. The Bible says, if you call upon the name of Jesus, you will be saved. So from that area of your need, that you know, the, the Bible says like this, God says like this, I will meet you at your tight corners. If you have such a tight corner in your life, today God is telling you that He will meet you at that tight corner. Father, I pray for that person, Lord. Who things are not happening according to their plan, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would restore it to them. In Jesus' name, restore it to them. You know, give it all up to God. Amen. Church, just give everything up to God. Let Him do the breakthroughs in your life that He wants to do. I'm seeing like this for somebody, some of you. You know, God has always plans to prosper you. But something is always holding you back. From that corner, you have to cry out to God. As Joseph cried out, from that prison.
Lord, I declare that breakthrough in some people's life. I don't know who it is, Father, but I thank you, Lord, that you have broken some people through in Jesus' name. The Bible says like this, you will always have plenty. You will give out of your abundance. Amen. It, you will not always have to go through situations when you are tight or when you don't have enough. In the time of famine, God sent Elijah to that widow. And Elijah asked, give me what you have. And the widow said, this is my plan. Me and my son, we're going to have and we're going to die. Elijah said, don't change your plans. But first, give me what you have. Lord, we command your plan into this people. your plan into this people father every single person father we command your plan there might be times when you don't have enough but those are only times that will pass away it's not a permanent situation in your life if there is somebody who feels like that has become a permanent situation in your life then you have a breakthrough In Jesus' name. And in some people's life, I'm again and again seeing, you know, you're going forward, but the enemy puts some stumbling block before you. So from that situation, call unto the name of Jesus. Because he will make your path straight. He will level the mountains that are before you. And he will raise up the valleys that are in front of you this morning. Father, we as the church, Lord, Father, we declare that breakthrough in some people's life. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by your spirit, Lord. It is by your spirit that the mountains move away, Lord. Father, we move away every mountains that are before us, Father. In Jesus' name, we break down every mountains. Today, God is going to challenge some of the mountains that you're facing. Oh, you don't have to challenge those mountains anymore. You don't have to challenge those obstacles anymore because God will be the challenger of your mountains. Oh, you don't have to look at the Red Sea and challenge it because God will challenge your Red Seas for you. A big way will be opened for you. Where you say there is no way, God is going to open a big way for you. And the zeal of the Lord will accomplish it. When there is famine in the land, one man is on his knees crying to God. God, please send the rain. Please send the rain. He tells his servant the first time, go and see if you see anything. The servant comes back and says, I don't see anything. The second time he says, go and look again. He sees nothing the second time. The third, fourth and the fifth time, nothing is happening. The sixth time also, nothing is happening. So many questions would have been going through his mind. Did you not shut the heavens? The seventh time. His servant comes back with a report. I see the cloud the size of a man's fist.
And he did not wait for another confirmation. He said, this is all I need. And he began to run. He began to run. Because what he saw was just the size of a man's fist, but he heard the abundance of rain. Church, don't look at what you see. Look what the Holy Spirit wants to tell you. Hear what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Jesus gets into Peter's boat and tells him, Peter, can you move a little bit further away and put your net into that side of the boat? And Peter said, look, we have toiled all night, Lord, but still at your word. But still at your word, we will do it. And they saw a miracle that day. They never, they, pour, they bought in so much fish that I don't think they ever imagined in their life that there was so much fish in that ocean. Don't look at what is before you. Hear what God wants to tell you this morning. You know, the people of Israel, when they were in Egypt, they were, they were in slavery. They did not have anything. But when, you call the, when, when God calls them out of their slavery, and when they begin their journey into the promised land, they did not leave Egypt as beggars or as people who did not have. In fact, when they left Egypt, all the riches of Egypt and the prosperity of Egypt came with them. When God calls some of you out of your present situation, that will be your condition. The enemy is challenging some of your spiritual blessings. You might not have strength to contend with him but you have the name of Jesus. So he is able to do. Father, we thank you for everything that you have given to us, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise this morning. And we thank you, Lord, for every breakthroughs that you have spoken into our lives. Help us to see it, Lord. I want you to find somebody else and uh, give them a good shake hand and say, time of seeing is coming. We are now hearing, but time of seeing is coming. For three and a half years, Jesus preached that the Son of Man will be risen up again. For three and a half years, he was preaching that same message. But when all hope was lost, when the gravestone was sealed, three days had passed, something happened. For three and a half years, they were hearing. Every time, 
Jesus used to tell to the Pharisees, you will get no other sign but the sign of Jonah. He said, I, I will destroy, you can destroy this temple, but in three days I will rebuild it. So many days, you know, people have been hearing these things. But one day, when nobody was expecting, the one who they had buried began to sit in between them. You're going to see some things. I don't know what you are going to see. Out of impossibilities, you will see something. In the midst of impossibilities, you will see something. Because that is how God works. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done, Father. We give everything into your hands, Lord. And this mor morning, Father, we truly give ourselves away so you can use us more. We surrender everything into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us give a clap of it to our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. God moved in a special way according to the need of us today. Whatever we was needed to us, God spoke to us because He is a God of now. He has given deliverances in many areas, in financial fields, in spiritual fields, whatever fields, the mountains you are, they were trying to oppose you, God has enlarged your territories. Hallelujah. Tell to the person next to you, God has enlarged my territory. Amen. My captivity is taken care of by my Lord Jesus. It is not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Let's say the Lord. We thank God for this wonderful opportunity. Heavenly Father, we thank you. As we sing and we praise you, we say we give ourselves away so that you, we can have you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. You are helping us to give ourselves away. Whatever we are, we are carrying as our own private. Whatever we are holding so dear to us as ours. Lord, we are willing to give it to you so that we can have your riches. We can have you yourself in us. That's what we need, you Lord. Lord, hallelujah. We thank you for blessing us through the word. Thank you for empowering your child to speak to the word of God. Thank you for the for the, uh, the prophetic words you have spoken to us. Thank you for enlarging our territories. Thank you for giving us healing and deliverance. Thank you for making us strong. Thank you, Lord. You are sending us with joy and satisfaction and peace, Lord. We thank you. We submit everything and everything concerning this with this church. It is yours, Lord. It is you are the master of this church. You are the savior of this church. You are the pillar of, you are the foundation of this church. You are the cornerstone of this church. And with Without you, we can do nothing. Just because Jesus lives, we live. Just because Jesus leads, we can go forward. And we truly acknowledge it is by the grace of our Savior and our Lord and the founder of this church by Jesus Christ alone. This church is standing and this church will go on forward. We thank you for your great mercy on us. We thank you for the worship team. We thank you for each and every person who is present over here. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. With such hallelujah, with such humility and with such humbleness. We thank you. We acknowledge that it is your grace and your grace alone is sustaining us. You have called us to the marvelous work of your king, of the of your work of your of the son's kingdom. We thank you uh, because you have called us into the marvelous light of your son's kingdom. Lord, we thank you. We humble ourselves. Lord, help us to be humble all the time because when we are humble, we can receive your grace. God resists to the uh, pr uh, to the proud people, but he give, uh, he give uh, grace to the humble. We thank you. Help us to be always be humble in the presence of you so that we can always get your grace, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us be a separated people. Always find favor with you and do and accomplish whatever you want us to complete in this land, Lord. We thank you for the word you are giving us so that you are empowering us to do the mission you wanted to accomplish. Thank you, Lord. Lord, hallelujah. We especially right now, we pray for the evening meeting. Let your presence come and fill the sanctuary. Let many people come and save, be saved. Let them enjoy the power, manifested presence of the life of Jesus. Let them be, let them be Lord, delivered and healed and saved.
set free lord hallelujah lord bring the people bring everything for the meeting be her be, be perfect lord now use the man of god for your glory and we submit everything for your glory lord we once again say everything you do in this church it will be for your glory no man no flesh cannot claim any glory but our lord jesus christ alone will take the complete glory and we are completely giving everything for the glory of our heavenly father through jesus christ thank you for blessing us thank you for sending us hallelujah been in victory and with joy and with peace in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen <laughs>